Hey guys, I'm here with the Turkish All-Star top laner and jungler Thaldron and Storm Age. Guys, just going to catch up with you guys on how your All-Star has been. First of all, uh, what's it like to be here at All-Star and to represent your region? Uh, to be honest, it's an honor to represent my region in here. And although it's a competition, it's like a, more like a fun event. And we had our fun, I guess. Like, even though we lost like some of the games pretty hard, I think it was a fun experience for us. And I'm happy, to be honest. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, well, what's it like to represent your region? Tabii ki de gurur duruyucu bir olay bence. Ama eski turnuvaya göre mesela, eski turnuvaya göre fan değil yani, eğlenceli değil. Daha çok tryhard bir turnuvaydı. O yüzden fazla eğlenmedim açıkçası. Ama yine de güzeldi benim için. Of course I feel proud, but this used to be a fun tournament, but not anymore. This is more competitive and I didn't feel as much fun, but... I mean, it was a good tournament. Makes sense there. And Thaldron, I have to ask you, obviously a lot has changed here moving to the tournament. Uh, what are your thoughts just on the meta and kind of all of the changes and uh, how they've affected the game? And just what do you think of them in general? Um, I couldn't find enough time to test out the meta, but as far as I see and as far as I played, I can see that like a lot has changed compared to the last meta. And I feel like it's going to be even like uh, more changes are coming before the season hits. So, like, I don't know. For this tournament, it feels like pretty fun, and especially Zoe is a fun champion. But for the rest, I can't say anything for now. Astomaj, what about you? What do you think of the jungle? Açıkçası fazla çalışamadım. Ligimiz bittikten sonra pek çalışma fırsatım bulmadı. O yüzden eski metadaki karakterleri oynamaya çalıştım. Yani fazla deneyemedim şansımı diyebilirim. So I didn't have too much chance to practice, too much chance to train. Uh, so I tried the champions that I used to play in the old meta. So not much practice meant I'm playing the old champions. And then of course, uh, it is an all-star event. There are so many good players from around the world, including you two here. Uh, Thaldrin, in the top lane, uh, who have you really admired or enjoyed playing against or see play here at the event? Who's kind of been the all-star that you were looking forward most to playing or that you enjoyed playing against the most? Um, for this season, I really liked the playstyle of QA, and when I first played against him in the Worlds, I felt like like I'm learning a lot from him. And in the All-Stars as well, it's like a pleasure to play against him, and he always teaches me the uh, like some windows that I'm missing, or he kind of teaches me the game during when we play. So I'm really happy I played against QA. And so much, are you happy that you played against a particular jungler here at All-Stars? Ambition'a karşı cidden oynarken en son maçta kendimin elim kolum bağlı hissettim açıkçası. Pek genk atacak bir yer bulamadım. Ecar bana da genk atmak zorundasın gibi bir şey. O yüzden bayağı sıkıcı bir durumdu benim için. So against Ambition I felt really underwhelmed. You have to gank, gank, gank against Jaron, but I didn't find any place to gank, so it wasn't pleasant. Yeah, it certainly makes sense. They're two very good players by joining us as well. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to throw it over to the Casa Desk. Thank you very much, Pastry Time, and welcome for our final game of the All-Star Group Stage. It is the LPL versus Brazil. The fans are ready, the signs are held high, and we're about to get into picks and bands. Yeah, I've never seen the NALCS studio look so much like Shanghai before. We got our sign game on point over there, and I'm glad that they brought it to the West Coast. We are missing the sweet, like, 20-foot Where it's like the whole the light banners that are absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's so cool to see the amount of community behind all of those players, just like giant Uzi banners and whatnot. But we're still doing it here in NA, and it's China versus Brazil here for the All-Star matchup as we're about to get into that final game, as we said, of the group stage. We already got a few teams moving on, but we still got to play this one out and see who can get those last bragging rights. Yeah, now everything is locked, so it is the LMS, the LCK, mm -hmm. the LPL, as well as Southeast Asia. Asia. Yes, so it is. that said, this is a true show match. Yeah. But Brazil has done it once before, and they can <laughs> certainly do it again. INTZ versus EDG. It's now the Chinese All Stars versus the Brazilian All Stars. Can they can they pull that from the playbook? They'll find that power. We'll see the first fan phase going live. Zareth, Tom Kench getting locked out of here. Uh, a lot of, not a lot of Tom, but I can see Tom being banned out a little bit more here. Already my favorite team. They banned Tom Kench. <laughs> I think he's been banned like twice during this entire so tournament. this is how you get favorite teams. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Just ban the, ban the frog. <laughs> Nar as well. And we'll see what they have on the side of Brazil All-Stars. They say, no, she ain't no quadra kills for you this time. Your Cassidy's gone. 
do not turn the game around. Yeah, it was that uh, NA was winning for about 99% of I know which game team it was against. Before Presence of Mind, Cassidy really <laughs> just ran away with that game. That rune oh, is man. so strong on that champion and allows him to play such a vicious janitor uh, on the back half of team fights with Rick Wall. Mopping people up left and right. Malzhar locked out of the game by China All-Stars. And we'll see what the last one is here. Ban phase one, the Brazilian All-Stars. Look at that Kami look. He's like, what do we do? So interesting thing is that China was one of the few teams uh, in the tournament that when Zoe was left open, mm -hmm. didn't go for it. True. So there is... Kobe doesn't, isn't happy about that. An opportunity here. Whoa. See, there they go. Brazil <laughs> targets 957. They say, you didn't pick Zoe last time. We're going to call your bluff. Are you going to do it this time? All right. See if it would be that first pick. Kami, a bit of an all-star 1v1 or himself. I can see him picking Zoe if it doesn't get picked up. Orn also left open, as well as MF, as well as that Ezreal that we have been seeing a bit of on the ban list. But Orn oh no! finally locked into that top lane. 957 is going to be spitting some fire. So hilariously, when prepping for this, I was like, should I look up Orn's abilities? Bring this up right now. He won't get played. He's got the, the blowy fire. He's got the knock-up. He's got the charge. And he's got the breath. rams. Yeah, the I actually, uh, we were playing a game where, where against the Vayne, and I'll always remember Orin's abilities because of this, and he threw up his stone, and I got condemned against the right wall. Right into it? I'm like, do not do. Please no, no. But the Zoe does get locked in. Let me see on the other side with Trump. So we've got the Zoe, we've got the Orn. How much <laughs> better can this get? That said, Orn is still technically a flex pick. He can go down to that support position. I think he makes full use of his entire kit, uh, including his really strong wave clear if he does go up into the top side, as well as his trade patterns. You know, it's it's a much different trade pattern in a 1v1 on a tank for Orn yeah. than it is in a 2v2 where he has to deal with that 80 carry. And the crowd is going nuts <laughs> because this is CA's signature champion in the LeBlanc. I'm actually really glad that I get to cast this game with you as well. We get to find out a lot of cool stuff and hear about these players that LeBlanc is locked in for CA. And MLXG will be spicy on that Cossacks as he gave it to himself. A Revolta Lee Sin possibly on the other side. Will he take the challenge of aggressive early game jungling? I mean, Revolta has already taken down Clear Love on yeah. Lee Sin. He might as well look for MLXG to add to that list as well as on the signature champion. Lock it in, Revolta. Yes. It is, so we're gonna definitely have a game of mechanical prowess here. Definitely between the junglers, that Zoe versus LeBlanc game in the mid lane, a lot of dodging, chains, hitting, and trying not to fall asleep on the side of CA. And you know, I did make a lot of comparisons to Zoe on the analyst desk to LeBlanc and kind of that play style, you know, mm -hmm. the ducking in and out to that huge poke burst yep. damage. Now, of course, Zoe has a much longer range than LeBlanc, but things should be very fast and furious between this 2v2 jungle mid duo in China and Brazil. Let Ezreal now get to put on the ban list. So you may have a, a little too much annoyance to deal with. There goes the MF. We spoke it earlier and now it's on the ban. 20 seconds left here for Brazilian All-Stars. What will they decide to stop from getting the game? I don't know why we're pulling the punches now. You already let, let Zoe through. You already Seriously. let Orn onto the field. Why not just have Misfortune and Ezreal? Everything's flying around. <laughs> What's the smile for? Oh, look at the inner band Jin. I can see though they would focus Uzi. Uzi likes to kind of pop off in these all-star type moments. I'm just saying, BRTT, it's your last game of All-Star. He's gonna play Twitch. He's gonna play Draven. Oh, you're right. And Uzi mm. could play Vayne. Ooh. I wanna see all of this. He doesn't have much protection as it is. That would definitely be Uzi protecting himself. We've seen it before, so not a big deal for him. But well, we will have to see BRTT saying, Draven? Yes. No, it's Draven. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. Did you say Draven? <laughs> oh. Oh, he blitz. Still, blocks in the god hand for Dude. We'll see if they can get the Blitzcrank play. So he says, I don't want to pick Draven just yet. The crowd wants him to pick it right now. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I want to see one or two more champions, and then I'll pick the Draven. You know, if I had to give away the Draven, though, I'm glad that it was the Blitzcrank. What if Uzi picks it here? That That'd be would even just, better. That's BM. Ooh, okay. Callista getting locked in. Haven't seen Uzi on that for a bit. Definitely didn't see her at Worlds that much. And we're going to see Mako possibly locking in the Kyle, being mad in the bot lane. Back to the Ona as he hovers back and forth. They have 13 seconds. And the thing is, is with all of the common 80 carries, the Misfortune, the Varus, the Jin, and the Ezreal, I don't know why I threw Ezreal into there, he's Klepto. Um, taken off the board, it opens up for someone like Callista to come through here. There we go, the response. 
It's like, would it have changed, really? Like, what were you not gonna play it against? Leona's gonna be in your face, like Janna would have been knocking you up and stuff. It would have been easier to play Draven. So I feel like this is almost the hardest choice to do it against. He was always gonna lock it in. Brazilian All-Stars versus the China All-Stars. We have our five before they get on to the Rift, and we have a game of Orn locked in here for a 957. I mean, this is everything you could want from an All-Star event. You've got the signature <laughs> champions and the Dravens and the Lee Sen. Zoe and Orn went through. Yes, Uzi decided to back out. He didn't pick his vein, but we still get the Kalista as sure. well as Leona. And it's not Ming next to him, it is Mako, but yeah. let me tell you, Uzi is very familiar with playing next to a Leona in the lane. The LPL actually does like that champion <laughs> and played it before Ignar made his, his name at Worlds with it. So great. We're going to have to see that positioning on the bot side. Dude could be making big plays with the Blitz Crank hooks. And we get to see Kami on that Zoe. We'll see how effective he can be and what his role from lane to lane is. That's that matchup we see now from CA's LeBlanc. So that in itself is going to be very interesting to watch. Yeah, and I'm really, really curious about what happens to Zoe if she falls behind. I feel like every game that we've seen this champion, she's just got so snowballed ahead. <laughs> and we already know that she does massive. That's so true. Exactly, massive damage, but from... So you want to see her do massive damage from behind is what you're saying? Well, I just want to see what happens. It happens. And unfortunately, <laughs> I have to make, you know, the, the prediction that I kind of feel like China are the heavy favorites coming in, holding number one. But we'll see. Maybe maybe the Zoe curse holds true. Maybe she goes massive and they take down China two times. We will have to see game six as we're moving out of the Rift LPL versus the CB LOL. The All-Stars hit the Rift. We're going to see what they have for each other here in inventories and on their runes reforged. Looks like it's inspiration for Zoe. So sorcery inspiration has perfect timing in her back pocket there. Um, Faker actually likes to run domination on Zoe. Uh, likes to get more of that, that burst damage as well as the flat domination trait of having the yep. added AP there. So kind of going back to the conversation, you know, what makes Zoe so threatening as a snowball champion? Everything. Yeah, everything. Her kit oh, is sorry, okay, we were going her kit's ridiculous, but you have to think of it kind of like in an abstract sense. <laughs> as hold on. Do it. Mm -hmm. Blind hook! Oh! What? Locked and loaded. Uzi gets pulled over the wall. He's not gonna be able to throw himself back. We've there. had well. blind arrows to interrupt Rift Herald, and he just Fantastic. throws the blind hook to force Uzi's flash out level one. Woo! That's a big target. Back to Zoe. Back to Zoe. So uh, when Zoe, or, or when a team is ahead and they start moving around objectives, usually you have the vision control, you have the minion control, and a champion like Zoe, who is so potent at picking people off, is already going to be empowered there. Now, my question is, is the same thing can be said for someone like Ari, like LeBlanc, like Lux. They are really dependent on having uh, zero to 100 kill pressure on right. someone to actually impact the map. And if they ever lose that, they're pretty much worthless or, or pretty garbage champions in my opinion. Maybe Lux got tuned back in a little bit, but we'll see. Um, Zoe, though, has the added benefit of the utility on her uh, drowsy bubble, which just creates a massive zone. So I have an inkling that even if Zoe does fall behind, even if she's not able to snowball or, yep. or take advantage of those dark areas of the map, uh, as she would normally when a team is ahead, that she can still offer massive utility through her kit, where champions like Ari and Lux necessarily can't. That's the thing, is those are still kind of, you have to make it happen. You sleep somebody, whoever gets that next hit, is gonna get a little bit of boost from steroid on their damage. So like you said, that utility can come in everywhere, but it is going to be interesting if we can ever see it from behind. It's just been such a dominating pick, already clearing out mid lane, pushing in CA as we see a little bit of the pressure head towards bottom here with Revolta. But the LPL squad has actually struggled in the early game in both their games against the NALCS as well as Southeast Asia. So if there is any time for Brazil to strike, it does tend to be the uh, the early minutes for this squad. Uh, Uzi doesn't have a flash. We already saw Revolta, you know, giving him eyes, <laughs> waiting for him to step forward. The special eyes. Let's see if he does it again. Not really trying to gain any brush control here. Getting the hits in, saying we'll slowly push the lane, and that's dedication from D. And extra hits pushes faster as he tries to route the hook just around the outside of that caster minion. Revolta stealing Raptors and back to the other side of the jungle. Actually was warded out by CA, so they kind of have an idea of where he is on the map. And it's now what does Emma like she do with that information. Mm -hmm. Now Orn has control over the top side of the map. That's to be expected. His kit is riddled with CC. He's got great wave clear. His damage for some reason, he just hits really hard. You're just like, I don't even know what to do with this champion. And then he can just sit in lane forever. Yep. 
Uh, so there's multiple options. You're going to go towards LeBlanc, hit the chains, uh, do the burst damage between your two assassins, or you can wander up top, play with your Ornn, show everyone why he's permabanned. Not this game. Apparently Brazil wanted to leave it up. Vert says, you know what? Ornn gets huge. I'm just going to steal everything that he gets. I mean, it could be the case that maybe you're just trying to see if 957 has actually practiced the champion. And with that combo, Ooh. I'd say yes. I'd say yes, indeed. And that's going to be MLXG coming in as well. The Fort Spikes to get the kill for himself and gets out clean. Two for the top side. One to zero now. Throws up the massive cliff, gets the charge there. So he gets a little bit of a displacement, some soft CC, and then follows it up. I guess he led, actually, with the... Uh, the fire breath there, and you saw the damage, the CC, and just how easy it is for Orn to dominate and control a lane. Is, let's just take it in slow motion. Yep, the Bellows Breath level up, cues himself in, or ease himself in, I should say, and then cues in the turret. And it is a bit deceptive. It's a tiny AoE displacement, so you yep. don't have to hit them directly onto the uh, knocked up terrain. So you can see that Trundle was actually just slightly to the side of it. Both summoners now used to that top side of Vert as we see 957 take control. Stand aside, knock up. They could have layered that CC a little bit better. Dude's gonna go in hard to make the ignite count! And he gets himself out with a flash. This is gonna be slow now. As soon as that overdrive wears off, he is crippled in movement speed. But BRTT repositions to get him out safe. Beautifully done by Brazil. And that is what I'm talking about. BRTT, he throws the gauntlet, he takes this signature Draven pick, oh, and he boy. 2v2 kills. Uzi, Uzi, you had your opportunity. You could have gone toe to toe with them. You could have taken the vein, and you are punished for this. And it's set up by both bot laners. Dude, finding an incredible grab right there. It was him who initially burned Uzi's flash, and he just capitalized. Can't believe he makes it out alive, too. Making China spend a little bit of time as the All Stars look for something back on that play. We can see a low amount of BRTT, and he was very happy with their last play. They're going to take a moment to back. CA gets a moment here. Bubble, having that bubble down is almost like that having a, a hook down, having the pressure down. You're able to go in. Last auto attack doesn't take down Kami. He gets the potion chugged and stays alive as they go back and forth. No one falls. Skin of his teeth walking out of that yeah. trade. So very interesting how CA is deciding to play this 1v1. He's effectively using the distortion to try to uh, maneuver around the paddle uh, bubble there. So kind of cute. We saw Faker try to take the Talia into Zoe. I think it was more the idea of Zoe doesn't have the greatest wave clear. She tries to use her bubble from the side to impact AOE minions. So you just want to shove her in and then roam. Right. CA seems to be going for the, I have the wave clear and then I have the added mobility that I can dance or dodge around your skill shots and then burst you just as hard. I haven't seen the roaming just yet and that burst. Six and a half minutes on the clock. Nobody's left lane. As just CA is hitting six with that top laner of 957. Things are all quiet now on the home front towards this bot lane. As we see Dude getting some wards in, but they're also playing the lane to set it up here. They say, here's Revolta, here's Dude. Do we get another hook? Okay. Right in on Tomeko, they say, we'll just bop him. Love tap there. Dude wants to get out of this one as the teleport comes in from 957. He will actually continue it and throws down the forge. That's going to be a kill on Dude. Double knock up there. BRTT forced to flash to get out with his life. And uh, like you said, Mako just planted his feet. He's like, you want to gank me? That's totally fine. <laughs> he was perfectly OK with everything that happened there. Very calm play from the Chinese All-Stars as they went throughout this, and we'll see it again. It is a very cute play, though. Using the control board and the brush to make sure that Revolta has an entry point. Uh, the flashes are both up. So at this point, Brazil's like, we either get the kill or we're going to burn the flash. But China, they know that they've got level six on Orn. He makes the teleport down there and a beautiful, nice angle there with the ultimate. I always love seeing that. It's probably one of my favorite abilities. You mean it's one of the most broken abilities I in the game? It. I mean, if a, if a skill shot is coming at you, walk per perpendicular to it, you dodge it. You know what we should put? We should give a Malphite ultimate, but it's an AoE <laughs> and it spans the length of the screen. And it keeps going. It's great. Oh my word, Kami. Going down. I don't find him, I don't see him coming out of this one alive. Who is gonna get the kill? He pops back a quick auto from CA to take him down. And they come up with a kill on Kami in the mid lane. Yeah, and again, unfortunately, uh, Zoe has the illusion of mobility. We've talked about Oh no, it. she's gone. Yeah, wait, she's back. Surprise. Just makes it a very easy target to set all of your damage up. And like I said, you know, Faker's approach was let's try to outplay Zoe through a uh, stylistic mismatch. You know, let's just try to shove her in and make for the roam. Right. And she is like, nah. Let's just try to pop her like a balloon. <laughs>
Well, you get that damage coming in from Emerald XG, and he has just been on point with his positioning. Kami is even already walking away, but they still make it work being able to close the distance. Yeah, that's just unfortunate. Perfect timing gone, and uh, she's gonna have to go right back, so just a split second longer. 957 Searing Charge to get himself to safety. You can see the Subjugate going back to Vert, so it is actually helping to get that fight in line. Locked down by the Solar Flare. BRTT is trying to clear the sun out of his eyes as Mako picks up that kill. And now Diyu's the one. He's gonna get that stun to Daybreak coming in if Mako gets the other shot. Either last hit's gonna come through with that bond from Uzi and Mako. And bot lane's looking much better for the Chinese All-Stars. That speaks to the strength there. Hold on, mid lane. Whoops. Oopsies. A little bit of a minion hit there. Didn't have a paddle star to make it work. Chain uh, X. Is there another chain? There's the barrier that comes out, and it's going to be the hit from CA with the sigil that silences Khan. But it never stops. Does it stop, though? Calling in the Forge God. He's going to get a quick searing hit onto Vert. Will he throw down the Volcanic Rupture to get a little bit more damage? And Revolta gets taken down immediately. MLXG is everywhere. His rip is the spicy hot pot. A double kill as he goes from mid to top. The coast to coast MLXG. I don't even blame Revolta from that one. He's like, wasn't this guy <laughs> just mid? Like, what is happening here? Unfortunately, uh, Orn had enough time, used his oh ultimate, my word. purchased MLXG the ability to get up top lane in time and save the day. And this is now a 3 0 in 1 Kha'Zix. He is a very big boy. Let's see it again. There was, oh, we're starting from the beginning. We, we're just going to have miss to. Go, one? This is going to be like a 40 minute <laughs> replay. Uh, what I was going to say is, this just feels bad, man. Yeah. Like, the power of uh, Callista and Leona, and Draven sitting here like, I've got a BF sword. Didn't I just, like, destroy you guys 2v2 for the Ooh. past two minutes? But doesn't matter. You've got two massive CC ultimates. You've got the added damage from Leona's passive coming through. And then to mid. And like I said, it's going to be a 40-minute replay as we then have to go into the mid lane. Uh, Kami gets a little bit of longevity here with the barrier there, but like you said, CA's just going to walk him down. And we aren't done yet. One more on the dinner table. Around the world in league replays. The ultimate buys enough time because even though it, it doesn't make the same impact in terms yeah. of the CC, they don't obviously want to walk into the, a line of fire of the massive ram. So they have to just kind of back up and wait. And it's in that waiting that allows Kha'Zix to get there. And a lot of waiting done after this play. Obviously, Brazil can't fire themselves into anything just yet. It's about farming now. It's about making sure. And now we get to see if Kami can start to be effective from behind, if the bubble set up BRTT, if other things can happen now for Brazil. I had a suspicion that this might be the game, but here we go. Solar Flare just misses, but the Zenith Blade does not. True on that E-Fire coming in from Mako, and he gets the flash as well out of DU. So playmaking goes away with just these few kills that the Chinese All-Stars are able to surmount. And it is a fairly early turret, uh, 11 minutes. Actually, it's probably just about on time. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Feels very early in the game because there's like 10 kills. Usually in the LPL, we've got 20 by now. So <laughs> I guess we're in cruise control. So 6,000 gold has been accrued so far and they are using that damage left and right. Zoe's bubble getting a little more travel time through the wall and then it'll travel its distance after it exits. And the back and forth here, we see that in and out play that Zoe gets. Now coming again from LeBlanc from that CA play. And again, LeBlanc is one of those champions that she just does so much better when ahead than either on the clock or from behind yeah. because her kit is so reliant on having kill pressure on anyone on the map. That's when you get those terrifying LeBlancs versus someone who just kind of teeters out. And Man, do we really have to have this champion right now on our team? I remember those LeBlanc days. It was like, there was a very squishy meta. Usually Zyra's would be the multiple deaths per map because the support would be found up by itself or your AD carry as usual. But it is just terrifying to have a good LeBlanc in the game. And a 2 0 0 CA putting the same pressure on as his Cassidy, one of those main wheelhouse champions. But this is a good look for Brazil. So unfortunately, Revolta's lanes are hemorrhaging right now. Uh, he does find a, a quiet minute to set down his own control ward, place down his own safety vision, and pick up the Rift Herald. And it seems small, but it, it's at least something for Brazil right now. And uh, while Revolta's lanes have been hemorrhaging, he has been trying his damnedest to get involved with this game and be just as active as MLX Young. Dude trying to get wards. Remember, his flash was just blown on the previous play and warding alone. Danger, danger. He goes down once again. That'll be his third death. And let's just be frank, there is there is no way that anyone from Brazil can go anywhere on the bottom side of the map. Like, it's from, true. from bot lane to mid lane, there's you cannot be there. A 
lot of cameras and a lot of vision. Call the Forge God through, knocks it right into Vert. Vert throws down the subjugate. Let's see how long this allows him to last. Searing charge now into Vert. Looking for the Bellows Breath just out of range and no Volcanic Rupture to finish off the kill. But the 1v1 potential is godlike for Orn. And we were talking about this, you know, <laughs> maybe you, you take the chance that because Ornn is constantly banned that 957 hasn't gotten the opportunity to really play yeah. the champion. Maybe uh, he doesn't know the, the nuanced things about it, but we've seen that, that slick combo multiple times from him. Seems really comfortable. I don't know what's happening in scrims over there. <laughs> the thing that makes it so difficult is when you get popped up or you're slowed for a moment, everything just flash? goes out of whack. Yeah. There is a flash. He, he definitely flashed after that wolf. Hey, you have priorities. Sometimes one sit above others. That was obviously a priority for MLXG. He's had a lot in this game, and it's been on every lane so far. The grab going in to get MLXG. Fate's call only works one way. And that's going to be on to the support if they need it. Mako's going to keep himself safe here. They still get out as Uzi's Uzi able to deliver turret damage and damage. Back onto DU. Goes down. I bet MLS you wish he had his flash right there. I'm almost disappointed <laughs> he wasn't punished for that. Uh, this dude, it's just, he's just trying to do his job. He's trying to make the picks where he can. He thinks he gets a good target, but unfortunately, it's a it's a 7K gold difference between these teams at 14 minutes and Ooh. possibly worse. Blinks back and forth. That's the thing. Whatever ability still kind of sticks onto Zoe. So when she gets back, you'll still be there. And that's what happened. They also get the kills on the top side still. 957 going to be the first under the turret. Oops, MLXG got his toes under just before 957. They're going to back off of that as Revolta makes it out alive. And at this point in the game, 957 has access to his, I don't know what we got there. It looks like 957 was hunting. But <laughs> taking a look back here, uh, like you said, Kami. Oh. You have to be inside your opponent's head to do something. Absolutely. We can kind of tell the Zoe's combo, but beautiful hit. And then to the top lane, as they just do not stop. And as I was saying, it was the Iceborne Gauntlet completed for 957. So he was already super sticky before with all of the CC naturally on his kit. Uh, just, just got annoying. that much worse. So I'm actually surprised that Revolta didn't fall there. Managed to scrape away with his life, but that's now the outer tower is pretty much all done. Just that top lane remaining in a stiff breeze looks like it'll push it over. Just slowly waiting. I don't know how long 957 is really going to have to stay for this one. The pressure may call Vert off to another lane and he'll be able to take that and continue the pressure. Revolta not finding himself in too good of a spot over and over again, which is kind of killing their pressure on the map overall. Mako again inside. They'll get the wards cleared and they'll make sure they have the ability to initiate. And again, I, I don't necessarily blame Revolta. It's been really rough. I don't think Draft really helped this situation, but you've got situations like this where all of his lanes are losing. The back and the fourth. Subjugate hits. We got the call. The Forge God missing. And still 957 stays just about half HP the entire time in the fight. It's like, I'm fine. That was mine. I'm OK. Don't worry. Is that Orin's voice? Yeah. It is now. It's the mustache, I swear it is. People will deny it, but it's the mustache. So he's gonna get some solo gold to himself up here. Just devastating these turrets. Taking him down 13 to one here for the Chinese All-Stars coming in from the LPL. Two to zero on the day. So make it, make, looking to make it three to zero in the end. It's three now. <laughs> well, I think they want to prove a point. Uh, LPL yeah. came into this event taking it very seriously because they're like, you know, the event doesn't mean anything on the international competitive stage. It's just for pride. So we've got a boot camp. We've got to get the facilities. We've got to get in there. Wait, so you're saying it's not international? We should have done much better. All I'm saying is that the teams remaining in this tournament, welcome to Rift Rivals. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who you were casting in your Rift Rivals, but I was casting <laughs> LMS, LCK, and LPL. Point. See what Shia can do, or Shia can still do in the mid lane. Look at the bot right side. It's like a light bright for the Chinese All Stars right now. You cannot go anywhere without it being known. And they're trying, the Brazil's just trying to ward their top side. So China has all the dark, uh, or all the fog of war on their side of the map to come out of. China's never necessarily been the best at denying a lot of vision. I think the zombie ward <laughs> particularly will really help them out when they're clearing out enemy vision. Then this is for us. Exactly. It just, it's a straight <laughs> buff to the region. That's fantastic. We'll actually see something like come into play huge. I mean, Zombie Ward is 
so strong. It what sucks. It is interesting to me is that they're not playing CA out into a side lane. They've uh, they had him out there briefly, but otherwise he's kind of been sitting next to MLX G. And by not doing that, they force themselves to skirmishes like this. Okay, Mako. They didn't really have to hit the CC revolt that gets taken down immediately because he's just a few feet away from the team. Kami's a little low on that mana, so he can't help to do too much to clear here. He's been doing as much as he can with paddle stars in the mid lane. And turrets are going to start to fall here in favor of the China All Stars. And you know, frankly, uh, Brazil really shouldn't be in these places. I mean, obviously, they're getting picked off, so that's kind of a no brainer, right. but they should be walking safely down into the lanes. And as I was saying, by not yeah. utilizing the, the double teleport into the side lanes, as well as the added mobility and kill pressure from uh, the LeBlanc, uh, China isn't having the best lane assignments, but it's working out for them because Brazil are walking into these traps. Very good point. Searing charge? Yeah, searing charge. Bops him out quickly. You can see the cooldown coming a little bit quicker for him there, but he is going to have to make a long walk back. Titanic, uh, I'm sorry, Ravenous Hydra helping to clear out those waves for Vert, give the team a little bit of breathing room, but every other lane here from China is being pushed in. Mako actually almost wanting that under the turret in a 3v1. I think MLX actually might have had to watch that happen. <laughs> They're getting real aggressive now. He's still chasing. Here comes Orn. What is this saying? What, you're 50 yards behind me? That's close enough. I'm going in. Mako hits the Zenith Blade. The rest of the team is going to be following up as BRTT goes down on the Draven. No cash out for him. It's China that's making those deposits right now, and CA is going to still look to find more. It just feels really bad when you don't see a champion on the screen, but then he gets to have such <laughs> an impact in the fight as here we go. Oh, MLXG to the back line. They were thinking everybody was in front of them, but they got to look over their shoulder. MLXG has been everywhere this game, and he is playing awesome on the Kha'Zix. They're onto the inhibitor turrets. I mean, they survived the Orn ultimate, right? Like, what what else can the LPL throw at them? The Orn ultimate comes down from the sky, blinds everyone. <laughs> They're diving Nexus Towers. They got the gods, they got the sun, and they have the Void Bug. 7-0-4 Void Bug at that. Uzi looking to get go a little crazy, gets himself to safety. Revolt to wait for the kick, but Uzi's gonna flash over the wall as Shie comes in to stop BRTT's follow-up damage as well. 9-5-7 on the other side, but that was a wham, bam, and thank you, ma'am, damage from CA as he takes down BRTT, who just respawned. Wanna see a magic trick? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh no. China's saying, do you wanna play a game right now? Oh, flying in, tries to get one last hit, but it becomes the pin cushion in the air. 21 to two here, looking for the final touches. 957's making a new home inside the base. And he's gonna throw out the forge god. That hits Zoe right in the face. Kami's up, Kami's down and more kills coming up here as they're slowly taking on inhibitor and inhibitor turrets, but slowly taking down, even slower, the champions. I swear he just used that yeah. ultimate. Back up. The Wrath of Uzi, though, he started the game, flashed down, he gave up first blood, and he is now sitting fat and happy, eight, one, and five on the Callista. He's probably thinking to himself, I should have picked the Bane. <laughs> he had all the protection in the world, it seems. We'll see where they go from here. Orn even bigger now on the top side. A few items to his name means basically we can't get pushed out of lane, but it looks like everybody's heading straight down towards that middle. Probably a final fight for the team as they wrangle Brazil together to make that happen. A few hits the bubble over the wall. And deja vu from the old LeBlanc play. CA still knows how to ride that bike. You know, I feel bad uh, for Kami at this point. It has definitely been a very rough game. But at the same time, I'm like, yes, Zoe, how does that gunblade taste? <laughs> Is your question answered, by the way? Are we getting it from behind the Zoe play? From behind Zoe, does it feel great? Not, from, not great at all. The paddle star is not hitting. They're not finding the focus. We'll see over the wall, Baron is taken by MLXG. The Forge God doesn't even get a chance to knock anybody up as Revolta goes down very fast. And CA is still looking for the kills here as they look to put down a few more members. Dude in the eyes now, 957. They know they can push off BRTT. 957's not even taking that much damage. I feel like we're in a race now. LPL saw LCK defeat Turkey in 25 minutes. We're now 23 minutes. Through. You've got two minutes left, guys. Looking to make it undefeated as well, all the way through a three and zero here. If they can lock down this victory and they are pushing Brazil onto their fountain. It's the only solace they can find at this point. China coming out very strong here. The Orn pick, the LeBlanc pick against 
Kami is Zoe coming into this game, and they were able to shut down just about every lane. A big name in this one, MLXG, as they put the final touches here on to the Nexus. China taking down Brazil, a 3-0 and zero finish, and a 0-3 and three finish as the Nexus falls. And I doubt we're going to see Orn make it through the champion select. 957 has shown everyone that, yes, I am very comfortable <laughs> on this champion. And, yes, he's still broken. That's the thing. It's, it can feel like 957 has kind of that champion pool, too, where he can just kind of absorb a guy like Orn or go back to his original champions. And MLX, she knew it, too. Where was he right away? Everywhere. And especially top. Especially top side for 957. And it's... Finally, nice to see MLXG break out of the Sejuani rut and yeah. grab hold of the Kha'Zix. Remind everyone what he made its namesake on the international stage. Those but I do want to look across at the Brazilian All-Stars. This is going to be the last time that we see them, but huge props and credit to their bot lane, especially BRTT. He threw down the gauntlet. He took the signature Draven pick, and he did first blood Uzi. So lose the game, but hold your head high. Heck yeah. You absolutely. made your mark. Everybody playing very well around the board. Everybody having their highlight moments as well. That's what All-Stars is about. Obviously, the players want to show more, and they want to be that All-Star in the end. But everybody's trying for that spot right now. Dude with some great grabs for Volta on your screen here. That guy, as we have said, has been in each and every All-Star as it goes in whatever team he's able to get on. So it's awesome to see these guys play once again. We talk about those legendary names that just keep coming up. Pray for the LCK. Revolta for Brazil. Uh, he's been just a signature player across the region, across multiple teams. INTZ, Keed Stars, uh, taking down EDG on the international stage. It wasn't the same <laughs> success story this time around, but like BRTT, he grabbed the Lee Sin and he yep. tried to go back to what got him here in the first place. Absolutely, and it's super fun to watch as well. On the other, as we were talking about both teams, back to MLXG in this one, you were saying it's good to see him off the Sejuani and whatnot. I came in with my notes saying, this is a tournament for this guy. Like, this aggression, this is what we'll see again. So, like you said, it's really great to actually see that coming back into play. So, to hear more about how China nabbed that win, let's throw it down to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Riv. Nabbed is one way to say it. Maybe just like ripped it away is a better way of phrasing it here based on the dominance that China displayed in their third win out of the group stage, moving along as the first seed in Group B. I mean, it was an old fashioned shellacking. That's what exactly happened here. It was very, very one sided. And, Cyrene, during the game, you know, you, you posed the question. I think a lot of people have been thinking about this Orn or Zoe, you know, which of these two OPs is stronger? And I had about a half second to think, and I was like, Orn. Orn is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And we got kind of a highlight reel, but even then, it wasn't played to the fullest, I would say. 957, some of his ults went wide, didn't even matter. Yeah, I, I don't think either of them really played to their fullest, but sure. I do think that Orn was the one who was really dishing out the shellacking there. Yep. But the big thing was, is Orn is tanky, he does so much damage for a tank, and it's kind of that territory where he has kind of everything that you would want mm -hmm. in a champion, the range, oh, way the more CD, than that. engage. It's, it's everything it's you lot. could want, and then he doesn't have to back. Then if he's winning trades, he just pops over, gets the honey fruit, he's full health. Oh, it's, boy. I it's think it's disgusting. I think it's pretty telling uh, about the strength of a champion when you're beating a trundle in a 1v1, right? Yeah, typically, yeah. typically, typically we look tank. at trundle and we go, look, as yeah, a as a tank, exactly. Like, all right, trundle should win that 1v1. It's if I have to group and team fight, I might get, you know, kite it out, blah, 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 and that's where the trundle can fall short. No, just straight up getting beat by 957 in the top lane, 1v1, with ults, with, you know, magic resist. And, with... I've, seen, and I've seen it twice, uh, this pick, the Orn. I've seen Fiora, which famously wins against tanks. I've seen trundle famously wins against tanks. Orn is no mere tank. <laughs> Orn is a one-man army. He's a great initiator. Didn't have to do that here because they were winning every lane straight up. Yep. He is insane. And for once, Zoe, he felt mortal, but that was also kind of a byproduct of the game. Yeah, I think a lot of that is also the champion that was picked into it sure. with GA on his LeBlanc. I think the way he played it was fantastic because you get Sleepy Trouble Bubbled, you can W you away, you can change your direction. And you got other options minions, too. A lot of things you can do. A beautiful counter pick here, the LeBlanc into the Zoe. We actually have a clip, a really nice individual mechanical outplay here in the mid lane. This one brought to you by Acer Predator. This is the LeBlanc here because he precasts the ultimate right there and it'll absorb the Q 
So he would have taken a large chunk there because he was slept and the paddle star was coming in. Yeah, the finishing off here, you see the other points. We talked about, hey, this champion doesn't have reliable escapes. This champion has to run away. Having the ability to gap close, having the ability to actually get on top of the Zoe, burst damage, it worked. Popped him later in the game as well. That was a lot, a really good look for the LeBlanc. Who, who would have thought that Zoe LeBlanc 2.0 mm -hmm. is only countered by LeBlanc, the OG. Yeah, because you think about it as well, like if you land a chain onto Zoe, she's gonna have to maybe R away and try to break it, but if she doesn't, she only has that pseudo escape, mm -hmm. right? She doesn't actually truly get away and have the option to escape. So you're able to, once you get on her, stick on her and I think, he actually showed that that was a big weakness of Zoe. And that's where we also then saw, as you mentioned, with the map kind of entirely collapsing, mm. how vulnerable Zoe can be to that dive, to you know people who ha are able to stick or gap close onto a carry. If I don't have vision control, if I don't have a tank line in front of me, all of a sudden Zoe doesn't look that strong. Yeah, it was bittersweet for me, because I wanted to see Zoe lose, but not to Orn, not like this. <laughs> I was like, pick your poison. I can't have my cake and eat it too. And I'm not convinced 100% that we can put Zoe in the same bucket as say Ari and other champions where, okay, we know about the all-in potential when they're snowballing, when they're ahead, but there's always the very, you know, boiler point, color point where it's like, okay, if the Ari falls behind, won't do damage. Mm -hmm. The thing with the Zoe, she still has the incredible pick potential going through walls. If you can just get a couple of control wards down, she can still do things. Can she still be the full power? Zoe? certainly not, but we're still gonna get, need one of those more medium level games where it's not just a very one-sided match either. Very much so. With the matches concluded, let's go ahead and take a final look at who promoted out of the group stage. For group A, the LMS took the number one seed with Korea entering the semifinals as the number two seed. Over in group B, the LPL completed their day at 3-0 with the Southeast Asian All-Star Sub Squad surprising many and taking that number two seed. That means our semifinal matches tomorrow pit the LMS against Southeast Asia and Korea versus LPL. So it is kind of what we were hypothesizing earlier in the day, but with these two semifinal matchups, how are we feeling? It's definitely something you weren't hypothesizing uh, before the tournament. Oh, for sure. China versus Korea in the semifinal, the first round, that's actually something that was not expected at all, especially with China being the number one. And Battle of Asia is the subtitle of what we ended up with. We had the Rift Rivals, the Asia region Rift Rivals. Now we throw in SEA as well, Southeast Asia is the entire Battle of Asia. And definitely the West will be very disappointed, but we could still have some competitive games. I mean, both semifinals here, you can pick winners, but even for China versus Korea, you're not 100% sure. Yeah, and you're asking like what we think about these. I think the LMS versus Southeast Asia, we're gonna have a great jungle matchup. We're gonna have a Ooh, lot of explosion sure. coming out there. Yeah. Karsa, Levi, Levi, I am ready for that. That's gonna be a ton of fun. Plus, a reminder that we'll move to best of threes yep. for that. So we'll get a little bit of, you know, reactionary play from game one to game two, seeing how these teams can adapt on the fly. Up next though, we've got that 1v1 tournament where it continues and we've got a host of hype matches like Faker versus Bjergsen, Uzi versus BRTT, and the Howling Abyss debuts of players like Prey, Reckless, and Sword Art. Now, earlier in the day, we asked you, what were some of the hype matchups you were looking forward to? And here are a couple that caught our eye. First up, Dot11 said they wanted to see Mako versus Sword Art in the finals. Supportal combat, best combat. Wow, okay, yeah, usually supports don't fare too well. A lot of mid laners, a lot of 80 carries in these, but yeah, it would be pretty interesting. And we spoke to Mako yesterday, and it's been said, Frostgren pointed out as well, that he as an individual playing, you know, in solo queue and on his own actually really enjoys playing non-support champions, loves to go to that mid lane in particular. So a little bit of individual prowess there from him perhaps perhaps, but yes, the support's definitely at a disadvantage along with the junglers, I'd say, yeah. when it comes to these 1v1s. And I'm a little bit less optimistic for Sorta. I watch his solo queue quite a lot. He plays on Korean solo queue a lot. Largely playing his role, so mm -hmm. I'm ready to be surprised, but for now, I'm not sure if the finals is What would be the best 1v1ing support champion? Actual support champion. Yeah, actual. Phase Rush uh, Tom Kench. Phase <laughs> Rush Tom Kench. Get him on the turret, turret, Get him yeah. on the turret. All right. All right. <laughs> I like it. Otherwise, I was thinking like maybe like a Nami. I was going to say like maybe Sona, Sona right? Yeah. Sona just feels Sona's like she pop against a certain certain people, right? Like that's a matchup maybe dependent one. Next up, we have Nicholas, who is not only excited to see Bjergsen versus Faker, but he wants to see them in a Zoe mirror match. I, I would love to see Zoe played at the highest of high levels. Hey, I mean, Zoe beat Faker earlier. It's his only loss in the <laughs> tournament so far. Crip tonight. I feel like he wouldn't want that to happen, though. I'm hoping, though. He might He might want to like, style, right? Show other people well, how it's done. So in the last two times that he's been in the All-Star Tournament 1v1, Faker has been like, let's, let's just 
you know, have a treaty with the other person. I will play your game. I will play your Anivia Mir match, Frog. Nice. And like, Baker's what are you nice. doing? <laughs> He's got off his angry, perch. Man. He's tried to be mortal. He's been like, okay, let's go for the skill matchup. He's <laughs> lost them, which is still something. I think he's in serious mode. He, he has to throw some breadcrumbs to us, you know, and just, oh, you can have what this What keeps one. him relatable? <laughs> nice guy, Faker. All right, we'll see which, or rather, what picks the pros have in store when we return for that 1v1 tournament coming up after the break. With that combo, Woo! I'd say yes. I'd say yes, indeed. And that's going to be MLXG coming in as well. He will actually continue it and throws down the forge. That's going to be a kill on Dude. Who is going to get the kill? He pops back a quick auto from CEA to take him down. Revolto gets taken down immediately. MLXG is everywhere. His rip is the spicy hot pot. They force themselves to skirmishes like this. Okay, Mako. They didn't really have to hit the CC. Revolta gets taken down immediately. Yes, here we go. Oh, MLXG to the back line. They were thinking everybody was in front of them as they wrangle Brazil together to make that happen. A few hits the bubble over the wall. A big name in this one, MLXG, as they put the final touches here onto the Nexus China, taking down Brazil, a 3-0 finish. 